Okay, so in today's video, we're going to have a look at laws of indices. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to have a look at some of these questions. So we're going to simplify this, uh, and we're going to just remember a couple of little rules here. So when you are timesing with powers, so x to the power of something, let's call it a, multiplied by x to the power of b, you add together the powers there. So you can do x to the power of a plus b, whatever they are as long as obviously it is the same base piece here, which is an x in this case. As well as that, we can have a divide. So x to the power of five, let's imagine, or let's call it x to the power of a again, divided by x to the power of b. In this case, you subtract them, you do the opposite, and that becomes x to the power of a minus b. Okay, we're going to be applying a lot of these rules again only when the bases are the same and again it's an x in both of these so we can subtract the powers when we're dividing. Now if we have a look at this one that we've got here, we've got a multiplication on the top and then remembering that this line here also means divide so then we're dividing by x to the power of 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up the top to start with and let's see what we've got up there. So we've got x to the power of 5 multiplied by x to the power of 2 so we can add the powers together there so that would become x to the power of 5 plus 2 which is 7 and that's all over x to the power of four. Now we can apply this second rule where we're subtracting them because we've got x to the power of seven divided by x to the power of four. So seven take away four leaves us with three. So our final answer would be x to the power of three. And that's our final answer there. So I'll look at something slightly different. There's just one, one example of how we can have a look at them. Okay, so we've got x to the power of three, y to the power of five, divided by x, y squared. So we've got different letters here next to each other. So we can't add the powers with the x's and the y's because they're different base pieces there, but we can have a look at the x's on the top and the x's on the bottom. So we've got a divide. On the top, we've got an x cubed here, and on the bottom, we've got an x, which is x to the power of one, even though we don't write the one. So we can subtract the powers just looking at the x's. So looking at the x's there, x to the power of three, take away the one on the bottom x to the power of one leaves us with x to the power of two then we can look at the y's separately so we've got y to the power of five and y to the power of two and if we divide them we'll subtract the powers and that will leave us with y to the power of three and there's our final answer so again just looking at those letters completely separately what's going on with the x's and then what's going on with the y's so we'll look at one more before we have a go Okay, so in this question we've got numbers and we've got letters. Now, numbers are always just treated like numbers, that's never going to change. So whether that's timesing or dividing, and here it's dividing. So we've got 14 divided by 7, just looking at these numbers here. So nothing fancy happens there, it's just 14 divided by 7, which is 2. Then we can move on to one of the letters. So let's have a look at the x's as they're written next. We've got x to the power of 5 and x to the power of 3. And we're dividing there, so we can take away the powers. That leaves us with x to the power of 2. And that's the x's dealt with. And now we can look at the y's. So we have y to the power of 3 divided by y to the power of 2. Subtracting those leaves us y to the power of 1. But again, when we've got a power of 1, we don't have to write that. So we can get rid of the y to the power of 1 and just write y. And there's our final answer for that one. Okay. Obviously, we could have a scenario as well where you're multiplying with numbers at the front. So let's imagine you could have 2x to the power of 3. You could have that multiplied by 3x to the power of 5. And you would treat that in exactly the same way. Numbers multiply numbers, making 6. And then you can add the powers, making x to the power of 8. So you could have it with multiplying as well, a similar scenario. Um, but I, like, I quite like this division when it looks a little bit more complicated. And actually, it's OK to do. So here's some for you to have a go at. OK, so here's your questions. So pause the video there, have a go at these. We'll go over the answers in just a sec. OK, so for the first one. Now, if we tidy up the stop top to start with, so we'll add those powers together. So we get x to the power of 10, and that is divided by x to the power of 5. Now, obviously, when we're dividing, we're going to subtract the powers. So 10 take away 5 will leave us with x to the power of 5 as our final answer. OK, on to the next one. If we go downwards, we'll tidy up the top again. We get x to the power of 8 on the top when we add those powers, and that's divided by x to the power of 2. Again, subtracting those powers would leave us with x to the power of 6, and there's our final answer for our second one. On to these two, which are slightly different. We've got to obviously divide those numbers as well. So we have 24 divided by 8, and that's going to leave us with a total of 3. Now we can focus on the actual letters and just focus at removing some of these powers. So we have x to the power of 4 and x to the power of 3 on the bottom. So if we subtract those powers, that leaves us with x to the power of 1. And we can just write that as x, but obviously we don't need to write that power of 1. Then we've got y to the power of 5 and y to the power of 3. When we subtract those, we get y to the power of 2. And there we go, there is our final answer for that one. 
On to the final question here, we have 60 divided by 12, which leaves us with 5, and then when we subtract the powers again, x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 2, so that leaves us with x to the power of 3, and y squared divided by y, that removes one of those powers, and again leaves us with a y to the power of 1, and again you don't need to write the 1 there. Again, just remember you can write that power of 1, but you're never going to see it written like that, so it's best not to write that power of 1, although it wouldn't be incorrect if you did so. So there we go, there are your questions, let's have a look at something slightly different. Okay, so we've got some brackets involved here. Now, when you've got the brackets here, you can just apply a little simple trick, which is x to the power of a brackets to the power of b, you'd multiply the powers and it leaves you with x to the power of a times b. Thinking about this logically though, x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 5 just means x to the power of 4 multiplied by itself 5 times, so x to the power of 4 times by itself 5 times, so 2 more, x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4, there we go. And if we were doing that we would just add together all the powers. So we don't need to write this out every time because if we add together 4 5s so that is the same as just timesing it by 5. So when it comes to this process we can just times together those powers there, so 4 times 5 is 20. So it's x to the power of 20. Okay, nice and simple when we've got brackets. Let's have a look at one more. On this one here, we've got a number involved. So just like before, numbers always get treated like numbers. So we've got 2, which is getting cubed on the outside, and the x squared, which is getting cubed. So we've got to work out 2 cubed to start with. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So we have 8 in the start there. Then we apply our little bracket rule there by multiplying the powers, so we have x, multiply those powers gives us 2 times 3 which is 6, so you'd get 8x to the power of 6. If you remember actually what you're doing here is 2x squared times 2x squared times 2x squared again, which leaves you with 2 times 2 times 2 which gets you the 8, and you add together 3 of those 2s for the power of x. Right, here's some for you to have a go at. So not many questions there, pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, let's have a look then. So, multiplying the powers in this first top left one gets you x to the power of 4 times 3, 12. Nice and easy, those ones. And the one below, 5 times 6 gives us 30, so we get x to the power of 30. There we go. Starting to introduce some numbers here. So we have 3, and we've got a cube it. So 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And then just applying the multiplication trick for our, for our power there, 5 times 3, is 15, so 27x to the 15. And then the very last one here, 5, and it's a squared on the outside, so 5 squared is 25. And then multiplying the powers gives you 7 times 2, which is 14. And there is your final answer for that one. So that's just some examples of some of the laws of indices. Obviously there are lots of different types of questions that you can have for these, but knowing these rules and some of these little tricks can help to tackle most of them. So that's the end of the video. If you liked it, please comment, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.